everyone welcome to my channel At first, I would like to thank all my sponsors for sponsoring this video. Our first sponsor is Neil and Jonah Nash channel. This is a musical channel where they play different instruments and a father and son does musical talent. Second sponsor is Safe from the Cursor. If you are a food lover, then this channel is the best. This channel is a cooking channel where you can learn how to cook and curve different food and vegetables. Our third sponsor is Teacher's Mimi. By name only, it is clear that it is a tutorial channel where a girl named Mimi teaches how to speak English to Philippines. And not only that, she also gives tips like how to do makeup and dressing style. So if you want to know more about them, please check my description box below. I have provided the link down there. Today, I'm going to teach you how to read a written pattern. I have made this video as I got a lot of people requesting me to make a video. We can find so many written patterns with pictures in different online places like Pinterest, different blogs, a young website, YouTube, and there are also so many different books that you can get it. So being able to read those patterns are very important. So let's start the video. Before even start reading a written pattern, you would first find written pattern. So the best place that I think to find written patterns are print test, book, blog, magazine, yarn website, and there are so many other places. Printers is one of my favorite places to go to look for ideas and written patterns because it's able to connect you with other websites and people's blogs where you can find all of these written patterns so you can save those ping and find them all later. Also, there are not free books that can be a great resource for beginners especially because they usually have such a clear and thorough written patterns and instructions and you won't typically find it on other website or blog. This is Amigumi 2 by Anna Pala Ramali and it's one of my favorite Amigumi book because it's all clear and thorough and I like the patterns that are in it as well. You will find a very detailed figures and patterns in the book. So it's a very good book and I highly recommend that you check it out. Now you know where to find the written pattern. It's time to learn how to read them. So one of the main things with kosher written pattern is that there are abbreviations that are used in them. SLST stands for slip stitch. So you insert, yarn over, come out and pull through. This is generally used to make a ring or a circle. CS stands for chain, which you yarn over and then pull through. SC stands for single crochet, where you insert, yarn over, come out, yarn over, and pull through both loops. HDC stands for half double crochet, where you yarn over, insert, yarn over, come out, yarn over, and pull through all loops. DC stands for double crochet, where you yarn over, insert, yarn over, come out, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. TR stands for triple crochet, where you yarn over twice, insert, yarn over, come out, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. YO is yarn over, LPS is loops, INC stands for increase where you typically do two stitch into the same stitch. All of this differs from pattern to pattern. Make sure you read the direction carefully. In this situation, we have two single crochet into the same stitch. DEC stands for decrease and it means the same as two single crochet together or two double crochet together depending on the pattern. So typically you have two unfinished stitches and then you complete them together. So you have one single crochet and another single crochet, yarn over and pull through all the loops completing into one stitch. SK stands for skip where you are usually skipping the closest stitch to the hook and insert into the next one. Although it could say skip two stitches and you skip two stitches instead of one. So it depends on the pattern. 
R P is repeat, B E Z is beginning, C O N T is continue, T O Z is together. F P stands for front post, while B P stands for back post. So in this, you are wrapping around double crochet instead of inserting into the stitch. So in front post, you are inserting while going from the front, and complete your double crochet. Whereas back post, you are inserting from the back around the double crochet yarning over and coming out and completing your double crochet so it creates some uneven patterns and give it a lot of texture so you can look at this baby hat that i made and so it has front post and back post alternating on it the instruction between abstract pattern tassels and brackets are repeat which can be a bit confusing but we will go to that later some patterns will say walking in the back or front loop only so in normal stitch, you insert underneath the both loop of this V, then complete the stitch. Whereas in back loop, you insert into the back loop farthest away from you. And in front loop, you insert into the closest one to you. So this is the normal stitch, then the middle row where you can see a raise as back loop only. Now let's look at an example to see how the written pattern can be structured. See whether it's a good fit for your skill level and how to approach to actual crocheting pattern. The first thing you typically see the skill level, although not every pattern has this. It says easy to set a for which indicates that it would be good for all types of people. And you will certainly see the materials and because it's red hard yarn pattern they are going to promote their own yarn but you do not need to use their yarn you can use any color you would like it will also tell you the crochet hook size and other materials as well as the gaze so gaze will tell you how to make a sample size and what the dimension of that sample size should be you can have the same final dimension as this original pattern I usually don't do it out of my personal preference and I just like to get right into the pattern. A lot of people rarely stand by it. You can do whatever you want. So if you are making a sample size and it doesn't turn out the same as the other one, if you need to make it larger, use a larger hook. If you need to make it smaller, use smaller hook. You can have the same gaze as the pattern. In some pattern, you will find the final dimension specialist teachers techniques and note which are really helpful for the beginner especially. And make this a very clear pattern, but you will find that in everything. And then you will find the written pattern itself, which is comprised of those applications that we saw earlier. If you are a beginner, I would recommend printing out an application set. So you can follow along and understand what everything means. I'll also suggest skimming the written pattern to determine whether the scales it used are too complex or just right for you. The pattern also broken up into multiple sections, especially for amigumi patterns which have different parts. This makes it clear and easy to follow. Plus you'll find the finishing section which tells you how to finish up and sew them together. As well as you will find some abbreviations which are very helpful if you do not have an abbreviation sheet. Few pattern will have symbol chart which is a visual way to understand the pattern. And I won't go into all the specific of it. If you need a video, please let me know. Now I will give you an example so you can understand how to approach a pattern and evaluate what it means from all those abbreviations and symbols. I'm not going to do the whole thing, I just want to show how to approach it with the small section. So we have the first part of the blanket and it says with A chain 71. This letter corresponds to certain yarn color. So usually in the material section they will say this yarn A and this yarn B. So you can have a look at the beginning and we'll tell you what yarn to use. It says chain 71. Usually the pattern start with a long chain for a row. And it could start with a smaller chain and to make a circle. We have some rounds here for elephant heads and round can also be abbreviated to R and D. We have our chain and our beginning row. So it says double crochet. We know that's double crochet because of the abbreviation we saw earlier. So then it says 4 chain from the hook. We have some parentheses. Beginning chain counts as first double crochet. So often you will have a little side note, they will say extra information for you in parentheses. Doesn't always mean repeating something. So usually they will tell this 4 chain counts as double crochet. And usually at the end they will tell the total number of stitch 
that are going to be in that row or that round. In this situation, there are 68 double crochet. It tells you those four chain counts as a double crochet. Then it continues. Do double crochet in next two chain. You know that, that means to be repeated. Skip next chain, double crochet in next chain five times. So often it will tell you how many times it need to be repeated or until what point it needed to be repeated. Then we have asterisk, we also know that that needed to be repeated. So skip next chain, two double crochet in next six chain. Then we have bracket, that's a little bit strange. We have asterisks and brackets. So let's just read through the row and see what needed to be done. That's what I always like to do is read through it so I know how to complete it before even starting it. We have our bracket. It says skip next chain, double crochet in next chains and we have bracket five times. So we have five times. We know that this bracket need to be repeated five times. Then it says repeat from asterisk to last four chain. Skip next chain, two double crochet in last three chain and turn. So we know that it says repeat from asterisk to last four chain. So we are going to repeat the whole thing until there are only four chain left. We are going to do this first part. Repeat this middle part five times and repeat the whole thing and then you will have four chain left. You'll skip the next chain, do two double crochet in the last three chain and turn. It could be a bit confusing if there are multiple of asterisk and bracket, but just read through the patterns carefully before you start the row. You will understand what the patterns is telling you to do. It could be a bit confusing and it's always not going to turn out well at the first time with written pattern. All abbreviations are pretty cozy, so it's not always going to be great. I recommend if it doesn't turn well, just unravel it and try it again. You have to be patient with it, so just keep trying. Another thing I would suggest to cross off the row that you have completed with highlighter or a pen, so you know what you have done already. Don't lose track. Thank you guys for watching this video. And if you have any video request or suggestion, please let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss upcoming update. And now you can hit the join button to join our membership. And if you want to purchase our merchandise, I have provided the link down in the description box below. Bye, love you all.